This episode was brought to you by Raycon. Come on, sledgehammer me. Yes, sir. Okay. Stan Lee, the father of Marvel Comics. <clears throat> the man behind Spider-Man, Iron Man, Man-Man. Basically, one of the guys who brought all of these legendary characters to life. But in the early 2000s, Stan the man here had a bit of a side project he was working on. And it's one that not many people know about. And for good reason. It is very different. Stripperella, an adult comedy cartoon about a secret agent superhero stripper. She kicks butt. She shows off her butt. She's based on Pamela Anderson. <laughs> well, kind of. Well, I say Pamela Anderson like you all know who I'm talking about. Anybody born after 2000 probably doesn't know who she is. I'm, I'm getting old. I'm old, Gandalf. We'll talk more about her in a bit. Just know that Stripperella was a cartoon show from the early 2000s. It was an original program created for Spike TV's adult animation lineup. Yeah, the one that included Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon. Are you ready for a speedball, my little bumpkin bumpkin? <laughs> But Stripperella was dirty, it was over the top, and it was stupid. Oh my god, does this show reek of early 2000s humor. Send in Special Agent 14. Stripperella, Chief Doganoff, here's the 411 on Pushing the Law. But most of all, this is the kind of show that kid you would watch at two in the morning. And then, oh my God, it's mom and dad. Uh, uh, change the channel. I, I, I wasn't watching Stripperella. I was watching a Bible channel. Yes, I'm listening to pastor talk about God. <laughs> is the Bible channel a real thing? I, I don't know actually. But despite being created by the legend that was Stan Lee, despite having his unwavering support and promotion, and despite featuring a woman who's practically a sex icon, Stripperella was a total flop and only lasted for one season. Wait a second, Saber Spock. Are you telling me that this show, which featured quality humor of this caliber, failed? And I have just had the worst diarrhea. It's funny, the worst diarrhea. It's not like you can have the best diarrhea. Diarrhea is diarrhea. <laughs> yep, it did. It totally did. But was it actually any good? Is it a hidden gem that was just misunderstood and was before its time? Was it more than just a surface level dirty cartoon with adult humor and boobies? What do you think, Stanley? Coming onto our stage right now. Give it up for Stripperella. Uh, let's find out. All right, so let's talk about the origin of this show. By the way, a shout out to Jim and Mars for helping me research this topic. Okay, like I said, this show was created by Stan Lee. Like, he straight up came up with the concept for this. Though one stripper says otherwise. Y'all ready for this one? I, I don't think you are. Okay, here we go. So the story goes that Stan Lee was sued by a stripper because she said that she came up with the concept of stripperella. She said that she was giving a lap dance to Stan Lee and that she told him her idea while giving him the business. Not the business like sex, but again, a lap dance. And that Stan Lee took the idea and stole it. <laughs> <laughs> like what? As if this show isn't already crazy enough. We get a story like that to base it off of. Now, is it true? Who knows? Was that her idea? Did Stanley steal it? Again, we don't know. The case never went to court. 
Apparently, the stripper couldn't afford the legal cost and she dropped the case. Could you imagine that though? Hey, Stanley, I got an idea for a comic book character. Let me grab my butt on your nether regions and tell you about it. Don't steal it. Okay, so Stanley, according to him, came up with the concept of stripperella. Now, I was under the impression that it was a comic first and then a show second, but that wasn't the case. It was a show first. Usually, it's the opposite, especially nowadays. But I guess this one's an exception. It also came out around a time where Stan Lee wasn't as big as he would become. Right around the corner during this era was the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have Spider-Man on the big screen, Iron Man was coming down the pipeline, and the cinematic universe that is Marvel and how it would redefine the company. But before that, uh, there was Stripperella. Where's Stripperella's cinematic debut, Disney? Where's her live action movie? Where, where was she <laughs> putting Thanos between her thighs and squeezing the Infinity Gauntlet off of his hand? I am inevitable. Ah! Now, there was a promotional comic for Stripperella. Get it? Comic strip? Cause she's a stripper? <laughs> it's gonna be one of those kinds of videos, guys. I am so sorry. So, a comic alongside Stripperella, but it never became more than a promotional strip. The full-on comic strip series was canceled. And according to my research, it's because of creative differences between Pamela Anderson and the rest of the staff for Stripperella. So who can really say what happened? All I know is that in the comic, Stripperella has red hair, not blonde, and her name was Exotica Jones, not Erotica Jones. A, a massive difference. There were also two other guys to help create the show, Heath Seifert and Kevin Kablau. <laughs> Kevin Kablam, which is funny because I think he worked on Kablam, Kevin Coplo. Also, there were some of the head writers for the show. Being creators of Stripperella, you'd think their filmography would be full of raunchy stuff. Let's check it out. Um, all that. Okay, uh, Keenan and Kel? Uh, Cousin Skeeter, okay, well, you know, at least the word Skeeter sounds dirty, so that counts, right? So Stripperella was destined for Spike TV. The production companies behind it included The Firm and Spike's very own animation studio called Spike Animation. Like I said before, there were a few shows intended for Spike's animation lineup. Stripperella, Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, Gary the Rat, and this just in. Each and every one of them, a failure. Some more than others. Spike was a TV channel intended for men. It was even in their motto. The first network for men. Hell yeah, bro. I want to watch <laughs> the Video Game Choice Awards, because that's what men do. Like I said before, Pamela Anderson worked on this show. She was practically Stripperella. The character was modeled after her, which I am told caused some problems. Something about how Stripperella was supposed to be a redhead, but Pam wanted her to be a blonde. Again, I don't know how true this is. It's just kind of like I heard it through the grapevine, rumors, it could be one way or the other. All I really know is that there was most definitely creative differences going into the show. Also, Pamela is not a good voice actor, like at all. Evil doers, prepare to become evil donters. But they pushed the pedal to the metal. Stripperella was gonna change the world. The comic, the cartoon show, the movie. Yep, there was gonna be a movie and Stan Lee was really psyched about it. So tell us about this live action film. Who, is there any talent attached yet? Who is, uh, who do we have for Stripperella? Right. There's gonna be, I was gonna say a nationwide search, but that's too small. There will be a worldwide search, a universe-wide search if we can arrange that. But surprise, surprise, as the title of the video implies, all of it was a failure. The show only ran for one season with a total of 13 episodes, and that was it. Again, 
creative differences, people not seeing eye to eye. From what I'm told, that was the downfall of this show. Also, something about the lawsuit freaking out Spike TV and that they might have pulled their support because of that. Again, who can say? All I know is that this show was a failure, and not even Stan Lee himself could save it. Excelsior! Or something like that. On this version of Stripperella, I'm very hands-on. Alright, so what's the show about exactly? Quick warning, by the way, if you're new to Stripperella, which I imagine many of you are, brace yourself for some weird stuff. Like, you guys are probably thinking, look at Saber Spark showing a little leg with his thumbnail, over-sexualizing it, and you know what? I know I do that sometimes, I will own up to it, but this time around, with this video, I'm the one being reserved. This show is so much worse than that. Out of all of the movies and shows I've reviewed, this one is the dirtiest. Well, <laughs> except for the porno I reviewed. It's gonna be hard topping that one. Stripperella is about Stripperella, AKA Radica Jones. She's a stripper by night and a secret agent superhero by night. She works for an organization where they send her off into the world to stop criminals and supervillains. When she's not doing that, she's stripping on the catwalk at a gentleman's club called <laughs> the Tenderloins. Stripperella herself is a bit ditzy, but not a complete dummy. She likes fashion, makeup, cute boys, and of course, dancing. Oh, and she loves animals too. She even has her own charity to help out animals, and it's called Animals Need Universal Support. Give it a moment. There it is. Along with Stripperella is a cast of crazy characters. There's Chief Stroganoff, Stripperella's boss at the organization. And this guy is absolutely insane. Like, you'd think he'd be the straight man who's like, Stripperella, I have to be serious. But no, he's like wearing ladies' underwear and spanking his own butt. It is, uh, he, he's a very good juxtaposition of what a boss should be because he's totally bonkers instead. Other characters at the agency include these two science nerds who make Stripperella's gadgets. And don't forget, folks, when Stan Lee works on something, you better believe he'll make a cameo in it. There he is. Eureka, check out my new invention. You guys are gonna freak out. The future is now. What is it? It's a portable telephone. And then there's Special Agent 14. <sighs> this, this character, oh boy. Uh, I, I completely forgot about this guy when I first watched the show. So while rewatching it, it was like tossing a cold bucket of water into my face. See what I mean. Come on, erotica. The people are expecting a show. Let's make it look good, huh? Yeah, that hasn't aged well. Stripperella also has a bunch of friends at her strip club. Her nervous boss, the gay bartender, and a few other strippers who work alongside Erotica. I'm kind of confused on the other strippers though, because they show up in some episodes and then just disappear for the rest of the series. The only ones who are consistent are Gazelle, Giselle, is that how you say it? Gazelle <laughs> from Zootopia. Then there's this other girl with red hair whose accent just straight up changes throughout the series, and the series even acknowledges that. And then there's Erotica's rival, who doesn't do anything. The show makes it seem like she would become a nemesis for Stripperella, but they never do anything with her character. I really think he might be the one. I think I'll steal him from you. Huh? What? I'm a bitch, remember? Oh, right. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do something I probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna do a quick episode recap of the entire series. I'll keep this short and to the point. That way y'all can get a better idea of the series and what it's about. Also, why it failed. Prepare yourself for puns! Episode 1, Beauty and the Obese Part 1. This is the premiere episode of the series, and like the title implies, it is part one of a two-parter. And let's just say that this first episode has a large premise. This evil plastic surgeon is going around injecting models with implants and making them become obese, and Stripperella has to stop him. Episode 2, 
Beauty and the Obese Part 2. In Part 2, she, no surprise, stops the villain. But not before preventing a bomb from going off in a breast implant. Ah! Y'all gonna like this show, I, I guarantee it. No, I don't. Episode 3, Crime Doesn't Pay. Seriously, it really doesn't. Chipo, who is the best villain in the entire series, is trying to rob the world's largest cubic zirconian diamond, which is valued at like $8 or something. Straight up, this guy is one of the best characters in the entire series. His premise as a villain is fantastic. He's like, we're gonna steal $7, or we're gonna save up pennies and steal them from a wish fountain. It's such a funny premise for a villain. It feels like a, a bad villain, I say bad, but like a C-tier villain you would see in Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, what is it? Me and Henchman number one, we've been thinking, maybe you might want to put a little more money into your operation. I mean, the three of us have to share one gun, and you won't let us buy any more bullets. Buy more bullets? We still have three bullets. Outside of the A plot with Cheapo is a B plot about Giselle at the strip club and this really weird situation with her and her father. The father is a businessman. He brought these clients to the strip club. He wanted Giselle to win their business or something like that. And she screwed up while she was stripping. And he's like, I have no daughter. And I also look like Colonel Sanders. It, 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 there's like big time incestuous undertones during this stuff. And it's very off-putting. I just lost the big account because of you. But, but. I'm ashamed to call you my daughter. The episode ends with Stripperella stopping Chipo and then convincing Giselle's father to be more open-minded, which heavily implies that she did something to change the father's mind. Take a guess. Well, one thing's for sure. Your dad certainly isn't cheap. Oh. <laughs> what? Episode 4. Everybody loves Pushy. Pushy. That's how they say it. Stripperella has to stop the villain Pushy Galore and end her reign of slave labor to create fashion products. She also uses the flesh of all of her dead husbands to make products. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the only thing weirder is the B-plot with this creepy guy trying to steal away strippers for his own club. Especially you, Erotica. <laughs> episode 5, The Wrath of Klinko. In this episode, a villain called Klinko is using his copy machines to brainwash customers into doing his bidding. Stripperella investigates the people in jail who committed the crimes, but Stripperella has a very unique way of getting the truth out of people. I'm innocent. You honestly don't remember robbing that bank? No. I'll know if you're telling the truth or not. My breasts are natural lie detectors. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Episode 6, You Only Lick Twice. Oh, another villain. And this one is named... <laughs> Queen Clitoris. Y'all ready for some puns? I'm having a hard time finding Clitoris. She's very elusive. Yo, oh, some men think that Clitoris doesn't even exist. Well, what do we know about her? We know that Clitoris is extremely sensitive. That's why it's crucial that Clitoris is not rubbed the wrong way. Stripperella stops her, saves cartoon Fabio, who was voiced by the actual Fabio, and then she meets the actual Kid Rock and Pamela Anderson back at the strip club. Cause at this point, why the hell not? You know, Pam, a lot of people tell me I look like you. Hmm, I don't really see a resemblance. Episode seven, The Bridesmaid. Supervillain Molly Lumpkin is stealing away men on their wedding day and hoarding them in a secret lair. There, she tells the men that one of them has to marry her and that the rest would be killed. There's actually a joke from this episode that made me laugh out loud. Stripperella disguises herself as a bride and has a fake wedding in order to lure out Molly and then puts a stop to her groom thievery. By the way, this is the episode where the show decided to change up its character designs and animation style. We'll talk about that more in detail here in a bit. Episode 8, Evil Things Come in Small Packages. 
Small Fry, a little person, is going around the city shrinking things down with his shrink ray. He wants to be the biggest guy in town. Stripperella fights him, a bunch of weird fetishy things happen, and then the episode ends in a way that you would imagine an episode with a growing machine would. Seriously. This show feels like a more adult version of Totally Spies. Now instead of turning you into a giant, it should return you to your normal size. Let's do it. Uh, guys? Episode 9, Eruption Junction, What's Your Function? Shipperella goes undercover at school to find out why all of the smart kids are being kidnapped. Turns out that it's this professor who wants to use a bunch of volcano science projects to blow up the school? Yeah, okay, whatever. These villains are ridiculous. Oh, and there's a brief musical number two. We're gonna have to hurt her cause she knows too much. Yeah, we're gonna have to hurt her cause she knows too much. Now we gotta chase her, and we gotta catch her. Then we're gonna hurt her cause she knows too much. Episode 10. The Evil Magicians. This is probably my favorite episode. Shriverella must defeat this magician who is stealing stuff alongside his puppet sidekick. I love it because the puppet and the puppets here have these long discussions about their life, who they are, uh, the puppet's gay. They treat each other like equals, like they're real. And then the episode ends with the magician accidentally shooting the puppet, which like was fantastic. Walter, no! Episode 11, Cheapo by the Dozen. Hey, Chivo is back, and he wants to steal copper bars that are worth over, dun dun dun, sixteen dollars. Hey, look, even Weird Al's in this episode, but not the voice of Weird Al. I guess they couldn't get him to come in to record, which is really saying something, because Weird Al voices in like every cartoon show. Evil locksmith, lazy Susan, crazy eyes, Weird Al. Episode 12, The Return of the Queen. Clitoris is back in this episode, and so is Fabio's character, but not Fabio's voice. I guess he wasn't going to come back to record either. But you know, changing voices is common in Stripperella. It happens all the time. As far as this episode goes, it's just a repeat of episode 6. Just puns and puns and wordplay galore. You've obviously stimulated Clitoris and got her all worked up. I think you need to finish her off. You're right. And finally, we have episode 13, The Curse of the Werebeaver. Some nerdy guy gets bitten by a cursed beaver, and then he turns into a werebeaver himself. He then starts to go around town, destroying everything that's made of wood, and Stripperella has to stop him. Here's the thing, though. Stripperella loves animals and never wants to hurt them. So what does she do? Eh, who cares? The action's wonky. Really weird fight scene here. Uh, a jaw reference because, you know, why not? And then a sex joke that basically summarizes the entirety of Stripperella as a show. I really believe he knew it was his time to go. In fact, his last words were, Jesus, I'm coming. Here I come. Oh, God, Jesus, here I come. All right, let's go over my five points. First, the stories. This show is a tongue-in-cheek satirical comedy that makes fun of James Bond and Batman and other secret agent and superhero characters. It never took itself seriously, and that's pretty obvious. It wanted to be raunchy and rude and sexual and have lots of dirty humor and sexy girls and combine it all together into a hot mess. That's fine with me. A show or a movie can be that, but that doesn't mean it makes it automatically good or enjoyable. Okay, Stripperella, you got boobs, you got sex jokes, you got dirty humor and off the wall stories, but why should I care? Most of the characters and stories are surface level and quite repetitive with themes. They don't do much outside of sex jokes and wacky antics. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. The novelty of it all wears off pretty fast, and the showrunners fail to do anything with the characters and stories, with Stripperella being the biggest offender of all. She's boring, which blows my mind considering her background. 
She's a crime-fighting secret agent stripper. That should make for an interesting character, right? <sighs> but she's not. Her personality is two-dimensional and never grows beyond dirty jokes and sexy body language. The villains are the real stars of the series. Legit, I would watch a show about Cheapo and his escapades over Stripperella any day. He's actually interesting and has a funny dynamic about him. He and the relationship he has with his henchmen reminds me a lot of Monarch and his henchmen from Venture Brothers. You realize what we can do with all those copper bricks? Build a copper house? No, we can turn them into counterfeit pennies. Thousands of them. <laughs> Next, there's the voice acting. The voice acting in this show is fantastic. You got Maurice LaMarche, Rob Paulson, John Lovitz, Mark Hamill shows up once, and then you got Tom Kenny, who voices like 50% of the characters from this show. But then you have Pamela Anderson, who is not a good voice actor. It sounds so unenthused. Oh, hi, I'm Stripperella, and I gotta go off to the store. And then it's always the store. Why is it always the store? Let me start over. Oh, hi, I'm Stripperella. I'm gonna dance on the catwalk and then go save people out in the city. That's what I do. And I'm also sexy. Yeah. It's so boring. Her delivery is so boring. And her character is already boring, so that does not help. My belly ring's vibrating. I mean, uh, my Nelly thing's migrating, which is Swedish for, I gotta pee. Then there's the dialogue. So the dialogue in this show isn't god awful. It can be it sometimes. Well, to be fair, the majority of the time, it's not fantastic. But that's not to say it doesn't have its moments. There are jokes and exchanges between characters that will get a laugh out of me, especially with the villains. But then there are jokes where it's just straight up lowbrow, stupid, poo-poo, sex jokes, and that's it. And that kind of stuff to me gets really old really fast. Beavers are warm, and sensitive animals. They should be stroked and kissed and caressed and played with until their cute little lips open wide. And oh, you said the word clitoris for wordplay. Okay, uh, that's enough. Please stop. I, I beg of you, stop using that word. We get it. You're talking about sex. Shut up. Please shut up. After that, there's the editing. The action and how it flows in this show is very wonky at times. Now, that's not to say, again, this is a show where it has its moments. And when it comes to the editing, this show has its moments, where it actually works out quite nicely. But, once more, the majority of it is not that great. There are action scenes where the way they put together the footage, I say footage, but like the way they would have the characters do their thing, the way the action would play out, it, it was so wonky fight scenes that weren't very dynamic and at times even came across as pretty static. There was this one episode that had these two snowboarders steal a purse, Stripperella goes after them, they fire a rocket launcher at her, a rocket, not the rocket launcher itself, a rocket launcher launcher, they fire a rocket at her and the way she flies all over the scene and how they fall and then how she goes back to the old lady, it just felt so sloppy and confusing. So that's the majority of the show. That's what it's like, sloppy and confusing. One purse, unsnatched. And finally, we have the animation. So to address the elephant in the room that I brought up earlier and said I would address later, the animation for this show changes at a certain midpoint. I forget the exact episode. I think it was Bridesmaid. Basically, the character design of Stripperella in particular and a few of the other side characters switches up where originally Stripperella had like the kind of thing over her eyes like Batman does or Robin or characters from Batman the Animated series and even though her body was sexy with like you know large breast and a butt and whatever it, it never felt like ridiculous proportions then they changed the animation and her character design goes from this to this from being somewhat stylized superhero sexiness to massive breast huge voluptuous hips and her eyes can now be seen throughout her little visor, whatever it's called. I, I don't know why they made this change. 
it went from being more actiony to cartoony in a way it's it's so bizarre especially since they did this during a season it wasn't in the next season it was during the first season go figure now as far as the character designs in their entirety I would say that not all of them are god awful. Cheapo's pretty great. Again, I'd see him as a villain who would make an appearance in Batman the Animated Series. Shibarella, her original design, was fine. I, I'm not crazy about her big hair, but uh, for what it was, it wasn't like god awful. It doesn't leave much to the imagination, but again, it wasn't that bad. Her change though, what she became with a new design, do not like that. It's way too much. Chief Stroganov, Agent 69 reporting for duty. Now, as far as the movement of the characters go, there are some scenes that catch me off guard where the animators up their game and it's fluid. Uh, there's a strip scene where Stripperella is on stage and I'm like, this is not bad. It actually has a good flow to it. There are action scenes that actually have, again, decent animation, sometimes good animation. But then again, as is the theme with this entire video, you got some good moments, but then the rest of it is just bad or below average or them phoning it in. And, th and that sucks. It's It kind of makes you wonder, oh, are we in for a good fight? Oh, let's see. Oh, never mind. This one sucked. You go from a dynamic action battle scene to her just standing and being like, you stop there. I'll, I'll walk over there awkwardly or fall awkwardly because that's what I do. The colors are okay, the backgrounds are okay, nothing outstanding, but nothing terrible. I don't see the studio that made this as a bad studio. I don't see Stripperella, when it comes to the quality of its animation, as anything that is garbage. It's just a very bizarre concept that was brought to life and for the animation behind it, it's like, okay, there are some parts you all did all right on, but across the board, it's pretty below average and sometimes just bad. Oh, by the way, I should mention, there is an uncensored version of Stripperella. Now, when I was young and I saw this show on TV, I never saw anything like nipples or whatever. And that's what the uncensored version has. It actually shows the nipples on the girl's boobs in the strip club. And it's like, oh, that's that's all? Okay. I thought it would be much worse when the Blu-ray is like, it's the hot uncensored version, too hot for TV. And then you turn it on. It's like, oh, it's woman's anatomy. Oh, no, girls have boobies. Run away. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the European countries are like, what's the big deal? It's just nipples. And then us Americans pull out our guns and I start blasting. I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. Okay, so how would I improve the show? This is a difficult question to answer. Unlike Delgo, which had a pretty clear objective of what it wanted to be and failed, Stripperella here is a bit more nebulous with what it wants to be. Like, you can mark it down to where it wants to be sexy, raunchy, and be satirical and make fun of superheroes and secret agents. That's obvious. But outside of that, it's kind of a, a mess. I don't know, I felt like the setting of it all was kind of confusing, and then of course the themes behind it too. Because once you pass all of the surface level stuff, the sex jokes, the boobs, you start to hit the core of the show and it lacks a lot of substance. And the biggest offender of all when it comes to a lack of substance on this show is Stripperella herself. She is so boring. As I already said, she's a boring character. Once more, someone with her background, with her way of life, you would expect it to be a lot more charismatic, a lot more exciting, a lot more fun and adventurous and much more to offer. But she's the most boring character in the entire show. When I see the side characters, I'm like, okay, at least they have some personality. When I see the villains, I get excited and I'm like, cool, it's Cheapo. I think it's funny seeing him squirm trying to commit crimes on a budget. That's hilarious. But Stripperella is like, oh, I'm here, boys. 
I want to stop you with my boobs. And it's like, oh God, we, we've done this again and again and again. This is going to be such an unfair example. I'm going to do it anyway. Batman from Batman the Animated Series is straightforward, as in he's a crime fighter, but he does have some depth to his character with his struggles, with his moral code and compass, and how he wants to stop criminals without ever having to take a life. That is fascinating. That is some good substance that makes his character tick. Shriverella lacks any of that. The only moral compass thing she has is wanting to help animals. And we only talk about that once in a very weird way. So as far as like her passions, what makes her fiery, what she hates, what makes her tick, anything that can engage her character and actually make it do something that's interesting, we don't really get that. Instead, it's a bunch of raunchy jokes, breasts, and strippers, and that's about it. This show is adult jokes that have their moments with dialogue, but not nearly enough to make this show stand up on its own two legs. Two very long, scandalous legs. Scandalous? Is that the right word? <laughs> that's what the Ashley say from Recess. I I'm stupid. Don't listen to me. So in conclusion, would I say that Stripperella holds up? That it was actually good and was just ahead of its time? No, I, I would say that it's not that. I would say that this show has interesting writing and jokes at times. It also includes villains that are pretty funny, but all in all lacks in its entirety when it comes to substance. There's no outstanding animation like there is in Primal, where it's like, I will sit down and watch this because it is gorgeous. That's not in this show, really. Compare this to Rick and Morty. Compare this to Bojack Horseman or Archer. Each one of those shows features characters who are interesting. We know what they feel, what they think, what makes them angry, what makes them happy, what they want to pursue. Some of them are a lot more silly than others. You got Rick, who is a very pessimistic, nihilistic person who doesn't care. That's something to work with. You get Archer, who's a party boy, but also a secret agent who has his own thoughts and opinions and hearing his dialogue is mwah, chef's kiss. And then you got Bojack, who is like depression incarnate. So you've got these characters that mean something. Shriverella wasn't any of that. I know a lot of you are saying, well, it's because it's just a comedy show. It's satirical comedy, dirty adult humor. It doesn't have to be Bojack Horseman. And I agree with you, it doesn't. But it could also be so much better. There are adult shows out there that can be dirty and can be raunchy and use adult language to win over its audience. Like Aqua Teen Hunger Force is a perfect example of that. It's dirty, it's raunchy, it's weird, but it features good characters. This is going to sound like a weird example, but Totally Spies is like a PG version of Stripperella, but it features characters who offer so much more with Alex, with Clover, with the other one whose name I forget. They actually have personalities. They are thrown into situations where said personalities are put in a challenging position. Not like that, shut up. Well, maybe for Stripperella. What I'm getting at is that Stripperella at its core is a surface level adult comedy. I don't think it had any major inspiration or aspirations for that matter to be more than a couple of dirty adult jokes. That was their target, that's what they wanted, and because of that, it was a novelty that died out in one season. And that's why it failed. Maybe if Stripperella was a better character, maybe if Pamela Anderson wasn't the voice for it, maybe if it was a combination of the two, then perhaps Stripperella could have survived. There's some timeline out there where Stripperella was in Endgame and was summoned back at the very end on the front lines with Iron Man and Thor and other Marvel characters. That universe is out there. We missed it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a thing that happened. And Stanley, you son of a gun, you are so weird with the things that you do. Because if it's not Stripperella, it's a Backstreet Boy comic instead, isn't it? I'm not joking. This happened. They, they even had toys at Burger King. There they are! Let's go! the Backstreet Project Cyber Crusaders. You can get one in every Burger King Kids meal you buy. Yeah, folks, that's the timeline we get. 
Oh, Stanley, you were so weird. And horny, apparently. But we thought there were so many blunds, and God knows I love blunds. Oh, so when it comes to sponsors, I make sure to only promote products and services that are legit. Things that are of quality and stuff that I would personally use. And as of late, I've been using the hell out of Raycon's earbuds. Believe me, I've had my own doubts about wireless headphones, but Raycon won me over. I use them when I walk my dog, do chores around the house, run errands, go to the gym. I tell you, it's been really nice not getting wires wrapped in my arms while using exercise equipment. That's uh, always embarrassing. But not anymore. This has got no wires now. No more cringing at the gym. Also, I appreciate how stylish they look and how well they fit in my ears too. They also come with earbud adjustments to get a fit that's perfect for you. There's also a recharging case that's very potent and can get your Raycon earbuds to full power four times over on a single charge. And best of all, Raycons aren't stupid expensive like other premium brands. They're fairly priced, but still have a high level of sound quality. I recently got their latest model, the E25, and it's their best version yet. It has 6 hour playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, a rich bass to the sound, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. There's also new colors to pick from, so click the link in the description below and use buyraycon.com slash saberspark to get 15% off your order. Again, I legit use these earbuds. I love them. They get the job done, and I recommend them.